Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, so we have proved we are able to start the presentation and not, now let's go to, to the space. Because we are using another computer where this is not installed in, for the presentation, I will skip it. Uh, okay, so uh, what's the uh, Linux for space? Uh, we have started uh, about a year and a half ago working together. And uh, from the early beginning, we are, uh, let's say, community-based uh, open source activity. Nobody pays us for our work. We are volunteers working there. And uh, we have started to work on it because uh, uh, several people met and we have been discussing the space applications, uh, looking for any reference, anything where we can start with. And we have found out that there is nothing because everybody solves their problem for based on a mission and we were starting starting to think that uh, it would be pretty nice to have something in common which uh, the community can share together. So, uh, and, uh, so it was the first initiative hour uh, that uh, last February we have started to organize some regular meeting uh, to, uh, and our intention is to pick up all the stakeholders interested in space or in the uh, Linux and space applications and to, let's say, to gather the requirements and to define how shall the Linux, which is ready for space, look like. And because uh, we are mostly uh, settled in Europe, uh, we also started to analyze the standards of European Space Agency, because if you want to have something in space in Europe, typically you will have to deal with that. And so we uh, always declare that we, our intention is to keep as close to the uh, European uh, uh, Space Agency standards as possible, because uh, they are so strict that uh, with Linux you cannot comply 100%. So uh, here are three organizations which have started uh, to work together. Uh, last year we have been working with the Research Institute of the Czech Technical University, then with the guys from the Czech Aerospace Research Center. They are here and they will, after us, they will show, show you their uh, satellite which is based on Linux and are currently working up there. And uh, we are from the Technical University of Liberec. Uh, uh, I have picked uh, the names of people who are working with us on our, let's say, regular meetings we have. So on the first slide, we are uh, two of us. Then there are uh, the guys from the Czech uh, Aerospace Research Center. Uh, uh, Javier uh, from European Space Agency is responsible for uh, software, uh, let's say, software on flights. And he helps us a lot with uh, the ESA standards. And uh, our, he, he, he helps us on our way. To, to try to be compliant as, as or at least as as possible, let's say. Uh, Eric Weiss uh, does a lot of stuff uh, uh, in the Octo. Uh, Tim Bird was so nice to join us, and uh, we are happy to have him on board. And uh, the same is for the last name. Uh, uh, yeah, Kaiwan uh, sends uh, many greetings to, uh, greetings to the audience, but unfortunately he couldn't come because he didn't get visa. So. Uh, and uh, now, shortly, what we are doing now, so uh, you, if you are interested, you can uh, scan uh, the QR code, which will lead you to linuxforspace.org webpage, and we try to gather all the information there. So we are organizing uh, regular meetings, which are going online every second week. Uh, and uh, on the meetings, we have found out that uh, everybody uh, now something about the space applications and the problems probably which we shall solve in space and uh, discuss and uh, okay we uh, had a lot of notes and stuff like this so that's why we uh, I think in March started the wiki page and discussed some general structure there. Uh, then we have been working on the requirements uh, and uh, we are uh, analyzing the standards and uh, let's say we are moving slowly to the implementation phase so we have started some GitHub uh, for, uh, which is ready for uh, for our layers, and also uh, uh, what we think it's important uh, to keep people uh, meeting together and discussing uh, all the problems together. So I will skip this, unfortunately. And uh, uh, so the result of the, let's say, the first year is that we agreed on some use case, general use case, uh, which is a typical for, let's say, the Linux for space distribution. So um, definitely we. Yet we are not reaching to have a mission-critical system. 
so uh, we have from because there are there is a so much. Uh, types of use cases in space, uh, as you heard in the keynote this morning. So for the Linux for Space, we would like to keep concentrated on the payload system, uh, which typically is working with no graphical user interface because it's running on a CubeSat. Uh, so CubeSat payload, uh, uh, which shall provide real-time operation for, let's say, uh, defined processes. And uh, we were when we were uh, talking about requirements and trying to define them, uh, we were focusing on the space environment. And space environments means that it's totally unfriendly to the hardware. You have a lot of radiation there. So uh, TLDR version, you need to shut, uh, shut down as fast as possible if you are reaching the radiation <laughs> area. Uh, and it's quite challenging in Linux sometimes. And uh, yeah, uh, you will need to have typically several redundant data and some backups there. So the, the other part of the use case is that uh, we have decided what defines us that we are designing the distribution uh, with the uh, standards in our, in our heads, thinking about the, uh, uh, what's defined in these standards to be able to be compliant. And uh, we have uh, decided to create some reference distribution uh, consisting of several met uh, meta layers in Yocto. Uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, we are visiting uh, the ELISA, work uh, ELISA project. There is a working group uh, uh, focused to aerospace. So we keep the space because there is a lot of, pe uh, a lot of people from the, let's say, avionics. So we are keeping the space flag there discussing uh, the stuff. And uh, the, yeah, the, the uh, last is that we would like to be community-based, I mean, to open to everyone. So everyone who wants to do something or even to comment something or provide us uh, any feedback is really, really welcome. Uh, so, yeah, this is for you. <laughs> okay. I will and exchange. Okay. Thank you, Anka. And I would like to talk about uh, CubeSat, uh, uh, Linux in space, especially uh, CubeSat. Uh, I, I took uh, several, uh, it took me about two months to uh, find out how many of uh, Linux is up there uh, in year 2022. 20, uh, and this is a result. Uh, you can see on the ch uh, chart that almost 20% of uh, CubeSat use Linux in space. There is about 30% 30, uh, 30 of firmware, custom firmware, and uh, about 8% of Airtos. And there is a big undefined area. It's, uh, it could be explained but by two options. First option is that I'm very bad at Googling and searching. And second option is that this is the uh, place. Uh, it's these cube sets were built, built by private uh, by companies, which don't want to share their information. Uh, use if they use any uh, any Linux. Uh, this statistics stats uh, includes only unique cube set missions. That means if uh, CubeSat, for example, QL called uh, Lazy, Lazy uh, was launched in January, and then uh, was another one with the same name uh, launched in December. We just counted as a one rep uh, record. Uh, one important thing to, uh, to mention is that one CubeSat may have a multiple system. That means that uh, one CubeSat may have RTOS, RTOS, uh, for uh, onboard computer and line, uh, cubes that may use uh, Linux for the payloads. Uh, here is a short algorithm which I use <laughs> to find this information. I just pick one cube set uh, and put together with keywords. Nothing, uh, no, uh, nothing hard. And and uh, if I haven't found anything, I just mark it as undefined. Uh, one uh, to find information about one cube set took about 15 and 30 minutes. It's quite a lot, and I just repeat it until I got mad. That's all. Okay. And in this table, you can see that uh, 
number of uh, CubeSat launched from 2020 is uh, is uh, slowly increasing. The year uh, 2020 is a, a COVID year, so I think that it has uh, impact uh, on space in, uh, space in the industry too. Uh, yeah, and we analyzed also also year 2021. It's about 50 percent of uh, Linux on the board. And next okay. slide, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and because it's very hard to find something about uh, about uh, CubeSats and l l and related to Linux. So we decided to create a Linux for Space Wiki, where every one of you can put uh, any article if you know about about uh, Linux in space, or if you want to provide some information about protocols, for example, for example, uh, uh, CubeSats protocol, which I don't know why this one. Uh, or if you want to describe uh, space missions, constellations, and so on, you can uh, you can use the space for it. That's all from my side. Okay. Right now. So uh, to the requirements, uh, uh, why we started with the requirements, and I think this is the first difference we have, uh, let's say, in the project, because. Uh, in avionics or in the automotive, you always start with requirements to have traceable design. Means you have to specify really precisely what you would like to get at the end. So we started to uh, on our uh, in our group. We started to uh, discuss the requirements. We had the first set uh, which we presented uh, in Dublin, and uh, after Dublin, a lot of people have joined several talks and discussions. So we needed to redefine it or update it, and everybody is reading and giving comments. So that's why we are delayed in the implementation because uh, we wanted to keep it. Uh, and uh, the uh, requirements itself are available uh, in public GitHub. The only problem is that. Uh, to keep the requirement model, we are using uh, MATLAB Simulink requirement editor, so we are exporting it to several output formats, but it's downloadable from there uh, with some uh, as some PDF export. Uh, if I will provide, if I would be asked, uh, what's the let's say the most important? So uh, I think the biggest portion uh, of the requirements is related to the space environment itself, because the problem is that. Um, uh, you have so many different missions, so we spend a lot of time in discussions uh, which type of requirements it's, let's say, mission specific and which can be understood as a general one. So uh, definitely, uh, I have selected as an example that the system shall, uh, we have started with the requirement the system shall start immediately. Uh, so then we analyzed what does it mean for the system and which parts of the system shall be somehow uh, analyzed and again, uh, maybe updated, modified, configured to be able to, uh, at the end, have this, have this feature. So there are several, uh, several nice uh, interfaces and protocols which are typical in space. Uh, they are mostly implemented in Linux, so we would like to have uh, in our layer uh, a support for uh, anybody who is interested to be able to, uh, let's say, integrate it easily into their Linuxes. And the other one is the uh, are the power constraints because uh, yeah if you, are, if you are running from the solar panel uh, the power is always an issue and you need somehow to have a power some processes may have uh, power budgets and you need to uh, let's say stop the process if uh, there is a danger that will eat all the energy of the cubesat uh, not to lose the connection itself uh, I was. Um, Surprised that finally everybody asks. So, how shall the kernel for space look like? I'm so generally we don't know. <laughs> yeah, because no, uh, nobody required anything yet, or said, oh, this is the mission specific uh, stuff. Uh, and so, so mostly uh, there are some feature. I think this is uh, yeah, and there yeah in our set of requirements is uh, related to reporting the information and the status of the cube sat back uh, to the Earth. Uh, so, uh, how we have decided to go from the requirements to the implementation, that for each of the requirements which is identified, uh, we added an attribute Yocto, uh, because uh, we need to keep the track uh, later on working in recipes, as they go, who asked, 
as to and who wanted it and uh, why he wanted it to be able to communicate, uh, let's say, with the main stakeholder who defined the requirement and to keep the track. If, uh, I don't know, later on you will find that uh, you cannot fill the requirement or you need some update. Uh, okay. That's my and now it's again for Lucas. <laughs> and this is my part. Uh, Part two ECSS st st standardization. Uh, just a brief uh, information: what is uh, ECSS and how is it device, uh, divided? It's divided into four uh, branches, and in the root of these branches is uh, just a ge general description which describes how these uh, requirements and standards uh, works. And yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, how it works. There are, uh, there are four branches, as I said. Uh, first branch is space project management. Uh, this aims to provide uh, information about project planning and implementation configuration, as you can see there. Uh, second one is space assurance. Uh, this branch is one of the uh, important for us our project, uh, but not everything from this branch is, uh, is uh, 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 let's say, important, for example, materials and Linux, I don't know. Uh, another, another one is uh, space uh, engineering, another, uh, another branch which is very important for this project. And last branch is space usability, which describe, uh, for example, planetary protection, space situation, awareness. A total count of uh, these uh, standards is for space management is six, space assurance is 62, space engineering 65, and space insurance uh, suitability, uh, sorry, uh, two documents. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because there are a lot of these standards, we uh, decided to uh, let's say select the one the ones which we need for our pro project we set up the rules like we or, uh, we uh, need to use requirements definitely which focusing on software engineering and io communication we can definitely exclude uh, the documents which are focusing on material mechanism and electrical and as uh, linka already said uh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, we, we, we are trying to be as close to ECSS as possible. After selecting, after, after applying these uh, rules, we can see that uh, space management is, uh, is uh, uh, mark are removed. Uh, there are EE components which are not necessary. Materials, as I said already, and in the space branch, uh, we can uh, we can okay uh, uh, we can miss other group option in mechanical engineering and group system uh, group ground system too, and space suitability is another branch which is not important at this time. <laughs> too fast. Too fast. Okay, I'm going back. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, after applying this rule, you can see that uh, space assurance is about uh, nine documents now, and space engineering, it's still a big amount of documents, it's uh, 60, uh, 36 <laughs> documents, sorry. Yeah, next. No. <laughs> no. Now is the turn. Yeah. And how, how, how to... Uh, um, how to describe our implementation strategy. First step is done. It's separate the document impacts because every document has a different impacts for us. Uh, the highest impact has a, a document with impacts on whole project management, uh, methodology, and so on. The lowest impact has uh, unrelated project, uh, for example, the materials. Uh, first phase is done. We set up an impact. Uh, now we want to start with documents with, uh, with the highest impact, uh, which uh, we will try to implement into our project. And then the third, uh, third phase is divided uh, logically into two uh, different phases, but it's still third phase. Uh, we want to 
implements uh, requirements which impacts on user, user space software and the driver implementation. Yeah. Thank you. And I tried to uh, show uh, how, uh, how many of the documents will be uh, in each phase. In the first, uh, second phase, it's about seven documents. Uh, in space assurance, uh, in second phase of space engineering, it's only about 10 documents. And in the last phase, uh, it's in uh, space assurance, two documents, and space engineering is big amount of documents, 26. And I think that's all from yeah, my side. So, uh, and uh, it links to the proposed Yocto structure. Uh, again, uh, when we are working, discussing the implementation, uh, we wanted to keep the connection to requirements and also to the standards. Uh, and um, uh, we wanted to uh, create set of layers which everybody can uh, integrate into their projects. Uh, so we wanted to keep us, uh, let's say, quite hardware independent, and we have selected few hardware references. Uh, so uh, first one is Raspberry Pi because everybody has it and works with that. Then the QML for somebody who doesn't work, uh, doesn't want to bother themselves with the real hardware. And that uh, VZLO is uh, the Czech abbreviation for the Aerospace Research Center because they have their own hardware and volunteered uh, to implement it there as well. Uh, and uh, we have uh, several layers uh, because we have decided to create, to, to uh, uh, let's say, have two layers, which one is, uh, let's say, called, uh, Met we call it Meta Linux for space, and it's uh, for the system layer. I mean, everything which is related to the system itself, uh, <coughs> like, okay, the bootloader, the image definition, or I don't know, whatever, the system configuration and stuff like this, uh, shall be kept in this layer. And uh, then there was the application layer. So if I would try to, again, provide you a TLDR version, how to orient it there. So the first one is the kernel space, and the second one is the user space. And uh, later on, we have decided to add, uh, so to do it like this. Uh, so on this, we have agreed, uh, uh, I think, about three months ago. Uh, so uh, our intention was to have the system in the dark purple and to have the Linux for space up. And then we found that there is a plenty of software which uh, maybe can be useful as well. So then we have decided to create, let's say, a container for some, we call it other useful space stuff. <laughs> for Linux, uh, but we would like to keep uh, on, on, the, on the left part, because again, for each recipe, for each piece of software implemented there, we would like, again, to keep really close to the methodology and the software engineering uh, standards which are required by European Space Agency. Uh, sometimes it's not possible simply because the, uh, the workflow, workflow of the open source is completely different than it's required by ESA, and I think this is one of the issues which shall be discussed maybe for the future. And yeah, so as I told already, uh, in the requirements model, we have some, uh, the Octo attribute where we uh, fastly started to discuss for, uh, let's say, feature by feature or requirement by requirement, uh, how shall it appear uh, in the Octo and later on who will be responsible and who will warranty to do it and, stu uh, and uh, stuff like this. So definitely there is a recipe system later and it links to uh, typically uh, to, to the Meta Linux for space or the Meta Linux for space app. Sometimes there are features which are related generally to the system uh, and uh, uh, we don't know how to do it in the Octo or there are just uh, maybe a comments or uh, comments to the whole system, and sometimes we, are, we have not decided yet. So, uh, again, uh, what you should, shall expect in the system layer, um, it shall be, uh, let's say, an, an example of the distribution, so, so we, shall, we, we hope to provide you Linux for space minimal image, I mean the minimal working uh, Linux bootable with uh, all the features we, need, uh, we want to have. So again, as an example, uh, what is related to space, uh, in the space, uh, typically you have some redundancy uh, uh, with the software because uh, 
The radiation may destroy your flash memory, so you will have several of the flash memories and you may keep more than just one file system because you need a copy of it uh, for, for the situation where you, where you, when you lost the first one. So during the boot, uh, this, the device itself shall wake up and this say, okay, I see uh, they were, I was sleeping because there was a radiation and now I lost this memory, so I shall start from this one. Uh, so that's exactly a stuff which uh, belongs to the uh, uh, to, to this uh, this layer. And again, you need to check the root file system that it, it was not corrupted uh, after the last operation. Uh, and uh, yeah, we would like to uh, have some kind of idle mode also for if you were just uh, let's say if the cube sat is doing nothing and waiting for uh, the, the payload is waiting to be working. Uh, so, what shall be uh, in the recipe application layer? Uh, for me, the best example here uh, is this the diagnostic information because the satellite typically needs to communicate uh, down to the earth to the people who are operating it, and uh, it shall report number of restarts and I don't know how many times, it, how long it was in the idle, and uh, and 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 a lot of stuff like this. So it's uh, listed somehow in the requirement. Or uh, again, uh, a service which is running in the user space uh, can be ready here, pre-installed and configured for you to be able, in, for your real CubeSat, let's say, to add your meta layer and to update it according to your needs. Uh, so we have started uh, a public GitLab core, the Linux for Space, and uh, you can see there uh, that there are three subgroups. First one is related to requirement, so means we keep it uh, just to have versions on the requirement and from that you can download as a GitLab artifact the PDF created from the exports. Uh, then there is part which is called Yocto and uh, layer by layer there are GitLab, uh, GitLab projects uh, for each of those layers. And uh, then uh, there is Linux for, spa for Space Yocto, uh, and we keep it there to, for you to have an example of, the, let's say, the working directory for Yocto. So it's done. So if you will download it and try to play with that, uh, uh, you just need select the, the, the type of hardware you would like to have, and it shall create for you properly working uh, directory for you to be able to compile it and, I don't know, play with it somehow. Uh, so again, back to the reference hardware. Uh, so we have decided to use those popular emulators and then uh, some, let's say, space-ready hardware. Uh, so the first one is uh, you, the type of hardware you will be uh, you can stay here and listen about it uh, in the next section. And uh, yeah, and uh, Javier from ESA has proposed us uh, to focus on the Noel 5, which is an uh, open source RISC 5 processor, which is designed to be space ready. So it's exciting. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's quite a challenge uh, to be able to support it because uh, it's not yet implemented. In, uh, there is some Linux working on it, but uh, yeah, so. Uh, unfortunately, this will not work, so I will just uh, stop here. So if you're interested, you're welcome. Everyone is welcome. Uh, and yes, we're already hoping. And now I think it's time for questions, if you have any. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's, I'm sorry for that, it's a Czech abbreviation for the Czech Aerospace Research Center, and the guys are just in the next line <laughs> at your back. <laughs> and they are, talk, they are talking in the next section. No, 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 it's the name of the research institute. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. But do you know what kind of work they need, what kind of research? Yeah, they will be talking about it. Ah, okay. <laughs> in the next section. So I didn't want to, uh, you know, <laughs> they want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, it's a surprise for the next session. Okay. Sorry? Actually, there is no requirement. Yeah, okay, there was a question about the real-time behavior, yeah. So when we were talking in general, everybody says, yes, it would be nice to have it. But when we uh, uh, went to the negotiation about the requirements, 
So when I was checking it last time before uh, last week, uh, in the requirements there is nothing about it yet. <laughs> Nobody required that to see. I wanna, yeah, I really wanna have it uh, done this way. And I think I think it's mostly because we are talking about the payloads, not the real uh, mission critical systems. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, each of these discussions ended up, okay, maybe this is really mission specific. Yeah. And do we have any roadmap or milestones for when will it will be ready? Uh, we hoped to have it. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, let's say uh, definitely it shall be. Uh, we are from the university and holidays are starting just now, so. We have two months. <laughs> I hope to have uh, have it uh, yeah, soon. The first version, let's say, the first demo. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I have another question for you. Uh, you didn't talk a bit about any IPR advisor. Uh, some people say it's uh, only possibility to, to, to comply with the ETC uh, as a standard to use I IPR advisor uh, on top of the hardware and then yeah uh, yeah there was a yeah, just to repeat the question that uh, there was a comment that I was not talking about any hypervisor uh, because uh, again to reach the requirements uh, from the standards uh, maybe this is the only way yeah but uh, uh, we are still working to, on the let's say standards analysis so maybe it will come later Mm -hmm. which, is, which is XNG now and is qualified for, for the European rules. So, as far as I know, it's a, it's a good way to do that, to do the stuff. Yes, <laughs> you are totally right. I, I was uh, about it on Friday, you know. I know, I know, we, we have, have emailed. We have the same project name, we don't know each other, but we have exactly the same project name in France and in uh, So in maybe we can cooperate France, somehow, so, uh, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Okay. So in our Linux space uh, is coming on Friday, <laughs> and we will be there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we can borrow you. <laughs> okay. Any? Oh, there is a sign that we shall stop. Yeah. Okay. So then we have to stop. I'm very sorry that we lost some time at the beginning. Yeah.